I do think that there's an increase and I'm wondering two different things. Obviously we've seen a lot of vascular stuff since COVID. Is it COVID? Is it COVID vaccines? Is it AirPods? I've seen AirPods maybe. I had a friend who had two brain aneurysms exactly where his AirPods went. And so I'm wondering about that. Whoa, that's a big deal right there, really? Yeah. So it was right where the AirPods went? Yeah. All right, guys, we are back for part two of my interview with the medical medium, Anthony William. We are talking all about, oh gosh, we're covering scans here. We're covering vaccines. We're talking the liver. Guys, doesn't sound like a popular subject, right? I feel like your brain, your heart, stomach, gut, those are probably more popular than your liver. But I've recently discovered how important the liver is and some things that we've been doing that have not been really great for our livers. So without further ado, here is my chat with the medical medium. You've uncovered this with blood work. Has there been something you've uncovered with MRIs, CT scans, and PET scans? Well, yeah. The thing is with those is that a lot of people, um, a lot of people have things going on inside their brain. Mm-hmm that will never be answered so they get an mri they get imaging done and something seen but it may it may be this thing where it's a mystery it's like we see this white spot we see this dark spot we see this you know area that's a little you know it's ambiguous it's confusing and there are so many people out there that have scar tissue in their brain and or they'll have a pocket of toxic heavy metals they'll have a pocket of copper and mercury combined and it's leaving a stain or they'll have some damage injured neurons from a traumatic experience from a part of their brain the emotional center of the brain overheating because something happened where somebody cheated on them betrayal um maybe they lost a loved one Maybe they went through a catastrophic experience, an accident, and it was so, so traumatic that the brain basically fried. There's, there's areas in our brain that can get so overheated from an experience that we have an injury that the doctor won't understand. It's not black and white. It can be confusing. It could be a marker found in a brain. What about a tumor? Through imaging tumors yeah could it be a tumor well, yeah well yeah well that's the thing i mean what usually with tumors you know they have and they do imaging for tumors they can identify them a lot better now than they ever did i mean if we're talking about 20 years ago 30 years ago and somebody has a brain tumor it was still really hard for them to be like okay this is definitely a brain tumor this is and nowadays they're a lot better with imaging Imaging is getting better. There's new varieties of imaging that's actually just coming out now. And, um, but, but there's all these other areas, though, of the brain where it's not a tumor. Yeah, it's not that. It's something else, but it's a mystery. It's like a lesion that isn't a lesion, but it could be. There's a white spot. There's, you know, a lot of calcifications happen in people's brains where there's calcium buildup, salt buildup. There's salt deposits in people's brains. And so it, it'll it actually showcase it on, an, on imaging. There's MSG deposits in people's brains, like people where the MSG is building up and creating a shadow. And there's calcifications that are building up, just like breast calcifications, there's brain calcifications. And so these are the things that science research are gonna have to really understand years from now down the road. Um, and that's something that's medical meme information too. talking about all these different things. Like they didn't know that MSG can actually create a deposit, but they will eventually because the medical meme information is always being proven right. They didn't know that you can have a salt deposit in the brain, but they're going to learn that as the years go on, because there's a difference when we're eating road salt versus when we're eating salt that has everything intact. So all the road salt that we've been eating all these years. What's road just salt? Thrown, yeah, road salt, like the, the processed salt, the real garbage chloride, right? That stuff. 
And that's in food. And that's one of the dangerous things that's like in fast food and packaged food and all that. It's the bad salts. What's but the, the bad salts? Salt? Yeah. What's and the, the bad salt, salt though? what's the good salts? Yeah. It could be like yeah, you know, Himalayan salt or, a, you know, black salt or a, which is practically the same thing or sea salt. Got it. Right. Where there's a lot intact. So it's not just all salt. It's it's all these minerals and everything else. So what happens when they use the road salts, the road salts, they 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 get to the brain easy and they pocket and they sit in the brain. So what we're going to see down the road, um, whether it's 20 years from now or next year, they're going to start talking about. We think science is discovering. We think there's salt deposits in <laughs> in the brain. Science is discovering. We think there's calcium in salt deposits. You know, it's just it's this is all coming. But but here's the big thing: toxic heavy metals are leaving most of the unidentified markers in the brain in imaging over probably anything else, more so than MSG, more so than DDT, because DDT is in people's brains, creates little deposits. Um, What's DDT? Still, DDT is that that wartime pesticide that was used on all the crops um, back in the 1930s, 40s, 50s. They're still using it everywhere else now, um, and so there's it's it's basically a pesticide, a type of pesticide. But there's all this stuff that's in our brain, but the metals are going to leave the most like mess and markers, and that that's what they're going to be up against down the road so imaging is going to get better and better and then they're going to see more things in people's heads mm -hmm. and be like what the heck is that what is that and science is going to be heading that direction and then they're going to start looking at these spots with cadavers and they're going to start taking a look at what's inside these deposits they're going to be able to locate the deposits and when they test these deposits they're going to be like oh my god that's aluminum mercury cadmium, cadmium lead and copper oh my god that's copper and mercury and aluminum fused together in an alloy. And here's the other thing. So I talk about this in the brain books is we have this alloy, al not alloy, alloy is one thing, alloy is another. We have this alloy brain problem where metals are actually mixed. They're joining together. So it's like mercury, aluminum, copper combined or mercury and lead combined or copper and aluminum combined or arsenic, lead, and copper combined. And these combinations become an alloy that's inside our brain causing more problems than just copper by itself, mercury by itself, or aluminum by itself. And so what they're going to find down the road when they open up people's heads and you know, when they realize that all these different shadows they're seeing in the brain and different white spots and gray matter that's looking on all these different things, they're going to start testing and they're going to find things they never even dreamed of. And it's going to be the toxic heavy metal thing. And that's coming. This so, just is. So are, do you see the harm in these scans? And the, the I just, pets, the I, CTs, the MRIs, just I, like you I mean, do blood work? That's what, well, I mean, blood, the blood work thing, that's catastrophic with what's happening with that. But you have a problem, you you got to go get an MRI. I mean, yeah. that's what you have to do. Yeah, but that's like for someone do. like me or someone like me who has so many different things, for example, they're like, we need to do another PET scan. We found all these liver lesions. And I'm like, I'm not having a third PET scan this year. I probably have them because of the other two I did this year. These people come with hazmat yeah. suits, Anthony. They don't want to even smell or touch or be near it. And then they inject it into your veins. I was like, I know I had to for the pancreas tumor. Yeah. Okay, but I I'm not doing it. Yeah. Well, that's when that's when it's like you look out for yourself. You know, you're you're your own judge of your own temple. And you you know, like different things you can feel or not feel like, you know what you're, you know, you can sense it with your intuition. You're just like, I can't do that right now. Yeah, I can't do that today. But you don't, you know, so that's, that's kind of our own birthright, our God given right, you know, as a human being here, where we get to also not be like a robot we get to think and we get to choose things that we want to do for ourselves. I mean, that's just, that's, and that's what you're sensing. You're like, wait a minute, I have to be cautious to some degree because, you know, I got these problems. I don't feel good. I have to be careful. 
and then you work with your doctors and you're like, well, you know, can we do this this way? Can we do, you know, can we do yeah. this tomorrow? Not today. And That's the key. And I think what people need to understand, it's similar to what you were saying with the blood work. We have to be an active collaborator in our health because what their job is to do on the other side is to present us with options and to say, this is what yeah. we should do because that's all they're thinking of. My doctor, when yeah. he suggested this liver PET scan or whatever, didn't even know I this specialist, excuse me, didn't know I had two already this year. You think they're looking at your chart and they're saying, oh, well, we shouldn't accumulate three in the year. And they're not looking at any of that. They're looking at their specific thing, which is why you've got to be the CEO of your health. You have to be the quarterback and say, oh shit, wait, I've already done two of these. Is this good? Let me sit with this. Let me ask some people. Let me think. Because we just assume these doctors know everything and they know everything about our body. But like you said, it's our temple and we're the ones who really know what's going on and what's happened in, in the course of time. How many MRIs you've gotten this year? How many CT scans? You have to keep a check on that. Well, you know, you're sitting in a wheelchair or a little gurney and they're rolling you to get a you know colonoscopy and you just had your twilight. So you're getting drowsy fast. And now you're going to go and get your you know colonoscopy. You're... And then they accidentally roll past that room to the lobotomy section and, you know, and push you in there and you're getting a lobotomy now. So, of course, you have to advocate for yourself and you have to look out for yourself because mistakes are made, too, mm -hmm. all the time, every day. Yeah, it's happened to my dad so many times. Every time he goes into surgery, he went to have surgery on his wrist. They thought that they were doing a prostate surgery. And then this recent time, he went to go get hernia surgery and they were they were um, going to shave his back. They thought he was having back surgery. It was it's crazy, but it's just what happens. So I have another question for you because I'm seeing um, so many people having brain aneurysms, blood vessels burst, all kinds of brain stuff. And uh, obviously I've had brain stuff, so maybe I see it more. But I do think that there's an increase and I'm wondering two different things. Obviously, we've seen a lot of vascular stuff since COVID. Is it COVID? Is it COVID vaccines? Is it AirPods? I've seen AirPods maybe. I had a friend who had two brain aneurysms exactly where his AirPods went. And so I'm wondering about whoa. that. Whoa, that's a big deal right there, really? Yeah. So it was right where the AirPods went? Yeah. So just radio signals right there. Yeah. You know, and, yeah, and the and, brain is stuck in the middle of them. It's frequencies. Yeah. Yeah, it's frequencies, it's radio signals. It's just pounding away at a certain neuron or a certain blood vessel. It's just pounding away there. It's very possible. Um, I've thrown mine sure. away for years for, for a long, long time. I, I felt like they were bad for a while. And my neurosurgeon actually told me they were bad. <laughs> but I'm Well, you know, it, it's, what's interesting is all these years, all these decades, like decades ago, um, the conventional world, the conventional medicine model would think that eating fast food was not your problem, right? It was like, you can just be, what did you eat today, sir? It's like, well, I had a pound of bacon this morning, uh, fried bacon. I had a box of donuts. And for lunch, I had, um, you know, bagel cream cheese on top of a pancake with a big hunk of butter. And then dinner time. I went to a fun fast food place and had, you know, fried chicken and all this other stuff. They'd be like, well, that's definitely not why you're sick, sir. That's definitely not why you're, you know, you're obese. It's definitely not why you have type two diabetes. And that's what it was like all those years ago. Right. That's what it's like. But now they're doing this, the conventional model. So there's all these people dying everywhere. There's dying here. They're dying there. Blood vessels are exploding in people's brains, aneurysms, um, embolisms, just all this crazy stuff's happening. Strokes left and right, heart attacks left and right, cancer left and right. Everything's just, everybody's just falling apart out there. And here's what conventional science research is saying now. They're saying, we think it's from fast food. We think <laughs> COVID has made it so people have been eating and indulging more. We think it's bad foods like fried foods that are creating this problem. And it's like Twilight Zone. You know, it's just the twilight zone. And that's what's happening now. So they have to kind of like, the industry has to pawn it all off. And now something that they were balking at 
50 years ago, 40 years ago, 30 years ago. And now they got a pawn in office. This is the reason why, guys. It's because you need to be exercising on a keto diet in the gym, taking care of yourself and doing your meditation. And if you're not doing that, then you're just going to have a blood vessel break in your brain and you're going to have this happen to you. You know, they're, they're trying to go with this now. Stay away from fried greasy foods. Stay away from fast foods. Make sure you exercise more. And that's the route the conventional model's taking now. And it's a trick. It's a good trick because everybody like is like, hey, I do like my keto diet. Hey, I do exercise. I like to run on my treadmill. It's a good, yeah, I am watching my waist. I am taking my selfies on the beach. Um, yeah, conventional medicine is right, but no, they're not. It's obviously a whole bunch of other stuff. It's obviously a whole bunch of other stuff. And we got foreign invaders going into us that we've never had before. Like? Foreign, foreign pathogens, pathogens that are manufactured. We never had to that degree these, these hyper, I call them hyper pathogens. That's, you know, we got white lung racing through the u.s right now What's it's white just lung? About it. it's just pneumonia because uh the information i get is it's viral but the industry standard is just saying it's bacterial you know you know something else but you know they're they're calling it but it's definitely viral i you know i don't know why they're hiding it but they're hiding it but it's it's rushing through this country right now where people are going to have scars on their lungs is that the rsv this no this is even different than that wow and so that's that's heading to town now heading to a theater near you <laughs> it's coming now and so people are going to be just so sick in the next month or two um and we're up against things we weren't up against before. And what are these pathogens and things that are com like, where are the, where is it coming from specifically? Well, the pathogens are just all manufactured or they're mutated. Is it vaccines? From, from, from originally being manufactured. It's, it, it, it's, it's, they're, they're made in labs. So there's just pathogens that are made in labs. I've talked about this forever. That's, that's how the Epstein bar became the Epstein bar. Yeah, because I had bioresonance a week ago. They said I have Epstein Barr. Yeah, everybody has it. At the end, at at the end of the uh, 19th century, um, what happened was, you know, they started working on seeing pathogens. Right at the end, you know, in the 1800s, in the 1870s, 1880s, they started seeing bugs. They actually, you know, created magnifying glass to such an extent they were able to see bugs for the first time, a world they, they just could not believe. And then that's when it started where, how can we start manipulating these bugs? What can we do with these bugs? And so the race was on for manufacturing pathogens and then releasing those pathogens by mistake, uh, on purpose, I don't know. But that's where the Epstein bars came from that's where the shingles came from and the HHV6, HHV7, the herpes simplex 1, whatever. They just, they came from a manufacturing process, a production process. And then they were, somehow they escaped the labs throughout the 20th century and they just escaped and got away. And so that's just, we're constantly battling that. So it's always the race is on for like biological warfare. The race is on for that. It's where we get exposed to new stuff every day. It's breaking us down. So basically what I'm saying, though, it's everything. It's the crap falling out of the sky, chemtrails. It's the fragrances that you're breathing in. That stuff is so highly inflammatory, highly toxic. It's the pathogens that are being released left and right. It's the metals we're being exposed to. And if you want to tack on fast foods or fried foods, we could tack that on too. But the point is, it's all these things that are just so out of control. And, and yeah, people are dying faster. So I think we need to go back to off the grid <laughs> somehow. <laughs> that just is the, I mean, because this sounds so depressing. <laughs> it sounds so depressing. It sounds like we're trapped in, in a nightmare that we can't get out of and that we're all just here to suffer. It just sounds so hard. And then healing is so hard, even though you could say it's easy. You just got to make better choices. It's hard. Um, you know, I'm, I'm, 
Yeah, it's just it's so hard. What it, what is your take on vaccines in general? Now look, it that's I've always said this from the beginning. You if someone wants to get a vaccine, you and and you're somebody that doesn't believe in vaccines, you're not going to stop them. It's rare. It's rare. If someone is made the sole decision to get a vaccine, they're going to go do it. If they're going to they made a sole decision to get a flu shot cuz they believe that the flu is going to, you know, hurt them and that this flu vaccine is going to save them. You can you can scream at them. Chances are they'll get it. They'll get the flu shot. You can scream at them and say, if you're somebody that's against the flu shot and you say, well, I'm against the flu shot. Don't go. It's bad. It's got bad stuff in it. It's got eggs in it. It's got all kinds of things in there. And then they they're, they'll still go and get it. It's a sole decision that happens like there's. The next wave of like the next pandemic and the next vaccine they put out there, there's people that got the vaccine this time around. They're just going to go and line up for the next one next time around. Doesn't matter what they saw. Doesn't matter what they read from somebody who's, you know, against vaccines. They're just going to go and get it. And it's like it, <laughs> and if there's somebody who they made a conscious choice a sole choice not to get that vax, not to get that vaccine. And that's what they, where they stood. There's a good chance they're not going to go and get one. It's a good chance when the next one comes rolling out or the next flu shot rolls out or the next MMR rolls out or whatever it is, they're being told HPV, whatever it is, they're not going to go and get it. And what I've noticed is it's like, it's like, it's like pot, you know, there's potheads, they smoke pot, they, you know, they smoke cannabis, they eat it. There's nothing wrong with that if that's what they want to do. And there's people that will never do it. And you can tell those people that will never do it to go smoke pot and they just won't do it. They won't do it. And you can tell people who are smoking pot to stop smoking pot and they won't do it. It's it's just like soul decision that happens when it comes down to and that's different, even more different than the vaccine thing. When it comes down to vaccines, it's different because it's entering something in your body and that takes like this whole it's a soul decision i've i've seen this for decades it's like this soul decision that occurs and and so it's really comes down to that because you can put you can put all this literature in front of somebody i've seen doctors out there that are anti-vax and they're putting literature all in front of somebody saying don't do it don't do it here's why here's why and that somebody still goes out and does it I can't tell you how many times I've had doctors tell me that they've told family members not to get a flu shot or a COVID shot or whatever it is. And they told that family member not to get it. And they put literature like here, look, here's what we're discovering. Here's what's in here. And they still go out around the corner and they're at the drugstore and they get the shot. That is like what that means we're talking about soul stuff now. We're not even talking about like physical body anymore. We're talking about something, some soul consciousness stuff. What What's going on there? It's a soul decision. It's something that like, it just gets taken over by something else we can't explain and we can't touch from above. It's like wherever we come from, wherever our soul comes from, that's a big part of this decision when it comes down to vaccines. That's what I've learned all these years and I still see it till today. Wow. It sounds accurate to me. <laughs> um, the Brain Saver book. Um, yeah, what- in the Brain Saver book, I talk about strokes, by the way, and how the that's a big thing now. And, yeah, and about foreign invaders creating these strokes. That's what I wanted to ask you about. What are the foreign invaders? I know you were talking about the pathogens and the metals and stuff, but... Are you seeing anything that we're doing every day that is contributing to this? That we have choice over? Because we don't have choice over the chemtrails. No, we don't. And we don't have control over madness out there. We don't have control over madness. We don't. And it happens every day. But we do. There are things we can control, like going back to, hey, can you take half vials, please? Not full vials. Mm -hmm. There's things we do have control of, right? Yeah. Let's go to the the hope here. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. That's well. (laughs) (laughs) Let's let's get some hope in here, Anthony. 
there's so much hope. That's the whole point. There's so much. And you can't protect yourself unless you know what's going on. Right. So Very we, true. in order in order for us to protect ourselves, we have to know what's going on or it's just not going to happen. I think that. Um, I in back to the whole thing, this is interesting. You can tell somebody use a natural detergent that's fragrance free. And they'll go and use a natural detergent that's fragrance free. But like but. If someone tells them, don't get a vaccine, they're around the corner getting a vaccine. That's the difference with the sole decision I was talking about. Mm -hmm. For some reason, there's there, the sole decision isn't part of what I noticed everything else. It's like, I got toxic heavy metals. What do I need to do? Got to get the metals out. Okay, point to the right direction. Um, by the way, I'm going to go get a vaccine tomorrow. Um, and then the doctor says, or the family member says, oh, don't do that. There's all this literature. Why? Okay. They go around the corner, they get it. Or, or it's the opposite. It's someone who never got a vaccine and someone wants them to get a vaccine. They're like, they're listening. They're listening. Okay. I need to get the vaccine. I need to get it. But they don't get it. It's the sole decision I was talking about. But like everything else though is what I'm saying, which is so crazy is it's, we have all this control to take care of ourselves and it's there. It's, you can avoid the fragrances in your own home. Yeah. Boom. You took control. You pulled the air fresheners out of the wall. You threw them out. Yep. You took that control. Check. Right. Yep. Check, check, check. I do essential Fragr oil. I've been using essential oil on my wrists. Yeah. Make sure on your essential oil products that you don't see fragrance okay. par or perfume. Okay. Perfume. <laughs> And not perfume, which is perfume, right? And you don't see those things like fragrance, perfume, whatever. And then it says, oh, by the way, essential oils of orange, essential oils of lemon, uh, fragrance, uh, <laughs> essential oils of... Look out for those because they're mixed. There's a mix of bad stuff with some, you know, okay stuff. Anyway, we have control over that, just like the blood work, just like the fragrances in the home, just like the pesticides on your fr front lawn. You can... Say like, no, I don't want that on my around my house anymore. You know, I don't want that around. I don't want that sprayed inside my apartment anymore. You know, there are people that are like putting their foot down for a lot of stuff. They're taking control mm -hmm. because you can and you can look out for yourself. It's lessening the toxic load. I'm not perfect in my house with everything, but I've been chipping away because I think it's got to be baby steps. It's too hard and overwhelming to just, it's with everything just to do it all. So I'm chipping away at everything little by little to lessen the toxic load. And I think that's what you're saying. Yeah. Well, that's, that's what it is. It's, and, um, we got, we, we have exposure to the chemtrails, but we can do something about it. We can get rid of it out of our body so we can get the metals out. We can do the right type of stuff to get the metals out. Did we you can say something get the about toxins eggs out. earlier. Are eggs bad? I mean, you know, the thing is, is eggs wouldn't be bad, but medical research and science um, back 100 years ago ruined them on us. So they ruined them. Eggs would be a great food for people if they wanted eggs. Um, it, it, it's, it, it was a survival food. I mean... A staple it still is for a lot of people i mean my dad makes me eggs every morning <laughs> yeah and there's a comfort to that it's a comfort food and people love their eggs but what happened was they decided to they found out that for some reason pathogens like viruses and bacteria thrive off of egg so what they did was and they do this now today like the flu shot, the, the, what they do is they raise the influenza inside eggs. So they crack open the top of the egg and they place the flu virus in the egg and the flu virus grows fast in the egg. And because of that, if you eat an egg and it goes inside your body, it's going to feed something inside your body. It's going to feed a pathogen inside your body. So... So like an because Epstein bar, like even if you have Lyme, perfect, all of that. Perfect. <gasps> like an Epstein bar, um, shingles, um, 
anything like that. You can have that you'll have that you have inside of you HHV6, simplex one, simplex two. If you're somebody with herpes simplex two and you're eating eggs every day, you're going to continue to get breakouts. Even if it's once a year, even if it's once a week, you're going to get breakouts because the virus was raised in an egg. Your herpes simplex one, your cold sore, your fever blister was raised in eggs. Um, your simplex two was raised in eggs. Your Epstein bar was raised in eggs. That's how it was created. It was raised in them. Wow. It was its incubator. It was its home. It was its food source because viruses love, they love um, underdeveloped protein. And the reason why the egg worked for them to raise the, the COVID virus was raised in eggs. The very COVID virus that's going around just driving everybody nuts that caused the world to shut down, it was raised out of an egg. That, that's the whole point. It's where it comes from, and that's where it proliferated. That's where it grew. And here's the thing. Information I'm giving you right now is, is not public, right? Only very little of it is public, right? Meaning about the egg and about the flu and you know, being raised in an egg, you can you can find you can find some of that where the manufacturing process they've showed eggs, but classified classified medical research and science that's where it originated from. Where public medical research and science doesn't know what classified medical research and science knows. They're like two different worlds. Sometimes they clash. They do intermix a little bit, but they're two different worlds. Wow. So what do you eat for breakfast? Me? Yeah. Um, two dozen eggs, <laughs> um, a whole bunch of corn syrup. If you lived with my dad, you would want to eat the eggs. His eggs are amazing. Yeah. But what do you two eat? <laughs> two pounds of bacon, um, sausages. I'm just kidding. I don't eat any of that. You know, I have my lemon water first thing in the morning. And from my lemon water, I have my celery juice right from my celery juice, right? I'll have my HMDS, heavy metal detox smoothie. I mean, that's what I do wow. in the morning. Maybe if uh, I don't have on. my HMDS, I'll have some fruit. I'll have some apples. If I'm too busy and I'm not having anything, I'll try to grab an apple and, you know, grab a coconut water or an apple or a lemon. She squeezed lemon in water. But I try to at least do, you know, the right stuff. Like I try to get my celery juice every day, my HMDS every day when I can. I try to do that. I eat some fruit during the afternoon. If I'm really hungry, I'll have some potatoes. And potatoes is controversial all on its own. Like there's still a ton of healthcare practitioners and doctors and potato, potato, potato is bad. You know? And so, but it's not bad. And, it depends on what you're putting on the potato, but that's another talk for another time. So we we were chatting at the beginning of this. We haven't talked to each other in four years. You were here four years ago. Okay. That episode, I know, helped so many people because I bumped into a girl. She owned a um, organic little restaurant in Connecticut. And she's like, your show saved my life. I go, what? <laughs> she's like, I listened to your show. You had the medical medium on. He taught me about the celery juice. She had a <laughs> severe ulceritic colitis. She did the celery juice. She took it on vacation with her. She was so, so disciplined about it. it took months, but they were going to operate on her and give her a colostomy bag. She was a young woman with three kids and totally healed her. And funny enough, I recently, so when they found the tumor in the pancreas earlier this year, they were like, oh, there's a spot on your lung and your liver, but that's life lived. But then in the same sentence, they go, but what we worry about with these neuroendocrine tumors, is it going to the lungs and the liver? And I go, wait, you just told me you saw something there. So I knew at some point I would go back to check everything. I'd have the surgeries, I'd heal, I'd have the baby. So about a month ago now, maybe, I went and did some bioresonance and the guy goes, there's some virus or something in your liver. He's like, but we'll, we'll do some, some stuff on it. Okay. I go home that day and I had a couple of books stacked on my desk and I have thousands of books, Anthony. The one I grabbed was the liver rescue. What? <laughs> and I was like, why is God talking to me about a liver right now? Because I see things 
like in a different way. I don't just kind of take things for granted. I'm like, there's some liver message coming. But what was interesting is I instantly started reading the liver rescue and I realized so many things. We don't know how important our liver is. First of all, we really don't know how important our liver is until you read that book. And then I realized God was redirecting me because everything I was doing to heal the type one diabetes that I was diagnosed with last year by starving myself of glucose. Well, you know, because you wrote the book, your liver needs glucose. So I said, oh my gosh, I've been doing the very thing that's, it's hurting my liver, what I've been trying to do to heal this diabetes. So I was like, okay, I'm trying to heal things, different body, can't heal it the same way. Um, And one of the things that stuck out was that glucose for the liver can't be followed by fat. I thought that was really interesting because what I've learned for a happy endocrine system is you have to eat in a certain order. You got to eat your vegetables first, your protein, your fat, then any carbs. But anytime you have anything that's glucose, you want to follow it with fat. So if I had an apple, like you said, you had this, you know, in the morning for breakfast, Yep. I would follow it with peanut butter. I mean, almond butter or something walnuts. to try to balance your blood sugar. That's yes. what we're taught, right? So all of this to say, um, are you hurting your endocrine system by not following with fat? Or is it just, I'm in an extreme situation where I have to be more cognizant of the liver right now? Well, the, if you do a fat chaser, so you're like, I need, I need to have some kind of blood sugar balancer stabilizer. So I need to have a handful of almonds and, um, some carrot sticks and, you know, a piece of apple, whatever, you know, people do all these different things. And so what that is, is like you have the carrot or you have the apple or you have, you know, something there, right. But you're, or an orange, but then you're fat chasing it down with some peanut butter and you're, you're trying to make that stabilizer that um, alternative science of research kind of like put in front of us back. I don't know. I think maybe 35 years ago, 30 years ago, probably well, it could even be 25 years ago, going, going back too far. But so we're all taught now that you have to have something like s- stabilized where you need that, you know, nut and that piece of fruit you need, you know, so the problem is with that is what we're doing there is we're inhibiting the minerals and the sugar, the glucose from getting into the cells because we have fat combined with it. So and it's like does a it cupcake. Coat it? Yeah, well, it, it interferes. It, it inter- interferes. It gets in the way. It blocks it. It actually blocks the sugar from easily getting into cells. So then your pancreas has to just throw out more hormone. It's like boom and boom. It has to pump it out because your pancreas is like trying to get that trapped sugar now because it's trapped within the Mm. fat. It's trapped in and around the fat and it's trapped in the bloodstream now. So now you have this overload of sugar in the bloodstream and only some of the sugar is able to get into cells and Then your pancreas is like alarm bells. And this happens to everybody every day, all day long. Their pancreas is now spilling out more insulin in hopes to go and seek out that sugar that's floating around the bloodstream trapped to get it somehow into cells. And so it's called insulin resistance. So everybody out there all day long, it's like insulin resistance. Everybody's living with it. They may not feel it. They may not know they have it. They, their A1C might not be doing something crazy, but they have insulin resistance. And so what's happening is they're living their life with this whole fat getting in the way with their sugar and then their pancreas um, spilling out more insulin to try to get the sugar into the cells. And it's a game. It's a game called circle. And it keeps on going around, you know? And so people became afraid and allergic to sugar so much so all these years that we starve ourselves of sugar we're like you know we're starving ourselves of fruit and we're starving ourselves of potato and sweet potato and winter squash and we're we're keeping it away 
And we're afraid, except when we have a chocolate bar, we're not afraid suddenly <laughs> then. We're just like, you know, just get me that 70% dark chocolate. Give me that 80% dark chocolate with all the sugar in it. We were not afraid then, but we're afraid of sugar so much. And it puts us into this crazy place in our heads and we become sugar washed, you know, brainwashed, sugar washed in our brain where we're like, no, it's evil. It's evil. And then then we're told, well, maybe if we have a fat with some sugar, that'll make it work. That'll make it work better. And it, it's sugar fear. You know, it's like the whole fruit fear thing. Here's what's crazy about fruit fear is the industry was so afraid of fruit. Every single person was only allowed to eat a green apple. Do you remember the green apple thing? Yeah. The Granny Smith, they were only allowed a green apple. That was their sugar. That was it. And then other than that, it was like, stay away from sugar. And then I was out there going, no, you can have fruit. No. And all that fruit fear, fruit fear. You've got to get out of fruit fear. But now it's like sugar fear, too. It's just people are afraid of it. But here's how it works. So you eat sugar and on its own, it will go into the place it needs to go. Your pancreas works less. It actually works less. So if you eat an apple but don't have peanut butter with it, your pancreas produces less insulin. It doesn't have to go into overdrive. Yes. It puts it into reserve mode. It's reserving itself, you know, preserving itself. And But when we have that apple with peanut butter, our pancreas has to spill out additional insulin to try to somehow find the sugar, get it away from the peanut oil, and to get that sugar into cells. And that's insulin resistance, basically. And then it hurts your liver because you're not and able then to have hurt. your then liver it hurts needs your liver. clean glucose. It needs clean glucose. It doesn't mean never have a fat again. It doesn't mean never, if you're an animal protein person, it doesn't mean you can't have, um, you know, your grass fed beef. It doesn't mean you can't have your, um, you know, free range chicken. It doesn't mean you have to like stop eating things. It just means let's have a morning with no fat in the morning, a f overt fat free morning where there's no avocado toast because avocado is the fat. There's no bacon. There's no ham, there's no butter, there's no cream, there's no coconut oil, there's no almond butter, there's no peanut butter, there's no nuts and seeds. And you keep that away from your morning. And in your morning, you have some papaya, you have some mango, you have some apple, you have your celery juice because you need your trace minerals. It's critical you have your mineral salts, those trace minerals. So you've got that celery juice or if it's not going to be celery juice, let it be then lemon water um, or herbal tea. Let it be herbal tea and then have your fruit or coconut water what and have your tea? fruit. Um, you know, nettle leaf tea would be amazing. Nettle leaf tea, by the way, would be great for everybody out in the audience. <laughs> no, nettle leaf? I've never even heard of that. But ask leaf. your doctor what's right for you. So make sure you have to <laughs> ask your doctor what's right for you. He, you're, he or she may not want you on nettle leaf. Okay, so... But the point is nettle leaf tea would be great in the morning. Lemon balm tea would be great in the morning. Put some lemon in there. Put a little bit of honey in there. Honey, sugar, yeah, glucose. And then have some apples, have some papaya, some mango, some bananas, maybe a smoothie, maybe the heavy metal detox smoothie, which doesn't have overt fat in there. So the medical meme heavy metal detox smoothie, which is uh, very popular around the world. And so you have that and... Then after lunch, if you want your handful of almonds later on, if you want your peanut butter, if you on a gluten-free cracker, I don't know, people eat all kinds of different things, but you have it later on. And so your insulin resistance isn't all day. It's not all day. There's a moment in your day where you didn't have the insulin resistance. It was, it's gone. The majority of it's gone. There's a moment in your day where you're, the sugars you got, the glucose you got, found its way into the cells of the brain and the organs, the liver, the liver. Yeah. Found its way in the liver, and that's critical because the liver needs glucose, not fat. That's why people have fatty livers. Their livers are getting trashed. I had a fatty they liver. Got the, yeah, the fatty liver. You can be working out every day. I see this all the time out there. You could be working out. You could be in the gym. You could be on your treadmill. You could be a marathon runner. God bless them. 
you can do all these things and then you get diagnosed with a fatty liver at age 50 and and then you wake up when you're morning and it's like, how the heck did that happen? Yeah. Why and how can I get a fatty liver diagnosis when I've been eating my whole grain oats and my peanut butter and my grass fed beef and I've been eating so good all these years. I'm a marathon runner and I got a fatty liver because people still don't know how to eat for the liver and what their liver needs and people can take it further than what I just said, and they can do even more good stuff. You can you can be overt fat free all day. You can be doing steamed potatoes with salads, leafy greens, like spinach salads with lemon and orange squeezed all over it and steamed potatoes chopped up and thrown in there and get all these incredible calories that are loaded with nutrients from your leafy greens. And you can get the lysine from the potato that battles viruses and the vitamin C from the citrus, from the lime you're squeezing on your salad. And you could chop up some onions and tomatoes in there and make this gorgeous meal and not have one overt fat in there and zero insulin resistance. Your pancreas is completely being protected in the moment. It's only releasing a little bit of insulin, just a little bit, and that's all it needs to do. And your pancreas sits back and it relaxes and it goes, okay, this is less stressful. So that means no olive oil on there. Yeah. And look, and it goes back to this now, you know, I've s- said this in other places. Um, you know, I, someone might like my McDonald's and, but Burger King, they flame broil, you know, they flame broil. Well, someone might like Burger King and then there's a step up and then boom, Arby's. Arby's has for some reason, like leaner cuts of meat. And then you go, step up you're at the olive garden olive garden has a lot of salads to choose from boom you go step up and there's just there's different ladders i'm not saying eat at any of those places i'm just saying and if you want whatever but there's different ladders and so when it comes down to it you can be overt fat free and you can go further and further into a deeper like way of healing and eating nourishing yourself you can take it to the next level, next level, or you can just say, I'm going to have an overt fat free morning. I'm not going to do peanut butter. I'm not going to do almonds. I'm not going to do almond milk. I'm not going to do oat milk. Oat milk is higher in fat. I'm not going to do any of that. I'm just going to have some fruit, some celery juice, some lemon water. I'm going to push my way to the afternoon. I call it the medical medium morning cleanse. It's in one of my books and it's in a couple of books and two of my books, the medical medium morning cleanse. And you can do that as an option, but but, but either way, what about for yeah. diabetics who have to do who have to keep their blood sugars under control? So you got to okay for diabetics. So you have type two diabetes, and what you'll see out there is like, um, you'll see like a doctor out there who's on social media just say, and they have a book or something, and they get somebody better with type two diabetes, and they're. I got somebody better with type two diabetes. Oh my God, world. I need to be on every talk show. I need to be, you know, it's like, it's like type two diabetes is one of these things where people can heal it. It can heal if someone's doing like keeping the, the real fatty stuff away, you know, like the real junk and the junk food away. It there's a lot of people with type 2 diabetes where just removing the fast food, the junk food, the extra fat, they start getting better with their type 2 diabetes. And so that is one of these things where it's an easy fix for people. But when you go into other things like type 1 diabetes, type 1 diabetes is a pancreas injury. And, you know, and a lot of people get type 1 diabetes because their injury gets their their injury is food poisoning to the pancreas. It's like, that's probably one of the biggest reasons for type 1 diabetes. It's a food poisoning injury that happened in childhood, happened when they were a baby, that happened when they were a young adult. It, suddenly that they're 19 years old. happens when you're 43 years, years old out of nowhere? 43 out of nowhere. <laughs> right? And th- this is just, you know, more of medical meme information. But where it originates from but so there's food poisoning issues that probably make up 60 percent of type 1 diabetes it's from a pathogen 
from something someone ate that went directly to the pancreas and injured it. Or COVID. Boom. Six months after. Uh, Boom. Exactly. Pathogens from COVID, right? COVID pathogens, um, a really bad flu. I've seen people get type one recovering from a really bad flu. And and there's also other viruses too. Even an Epstein-Barr can find its way into the pancreas or an HHV-6 and do damage in there and give somebody type 1 diabetes. And so in this case, you know, we, we want, number one, we don't want it getting worse. We don't want the type 1 to get worse. We want the type 1 to be stabilized. We want it to improve and get better. And it can be done. Like, we can do that. And so, um, but there's a difference between type 2 diabetes, which is a sluggish, stagnant, um, overburdened, overworked liver. And it's clobbered with toxins and garbage and poisons and pathogens and everything else and fat. And it's just encased in fat. And when you start breaking all that down, type 2 starts going away. And there's a lot of different guys now. They're getting their people to eat different or do different things, and they're watching their numbers. They're they're type two disappear, and they're like heroes now, right? And but type one, you got to catch early to get rid of it. So if you got food poisoning, and now you're diagnosed with type one a month later, if you jump on it right then, you can stop it. You can stop type one right then and there. No one believes it's that's if, possible, though. It's so possible if it's but if it's someone that. if it's jumped on early, yeah, like early, it's possible. Um, How do they and do it? Car accidents, by the way, is a big type one problem too. What like car accident? Car accidents where your pancreas gets physically injured. So if you're in a car accident and you get jostled, you get injured. Sports injuries. That's another one too. Um, the pancreas gets hit. If you get pancreatitis or you get an inflamed pancreas because it's been physically injured, that's a recipe for type one. That's a percentage of type one too. Wow. And then the other percentage is like we talked about the pathogens, the viruses and so forth. I wonder how many football players or boxers get type one. Everybody gets type one. And yeah, especially people who get punched right there. I in used that to have area. people punch me in the stomach all the time. Why were they punching you in the stomach? Because I was like, you can't hurt steel. I used to, my dad, <laughs> I learned it from my dad. My dad in the village used to have people throw boulders on his stomach and he would bounce them off. And I was like, oh, I don't want a boulder. I'll have people punch me. And I used to have people punch me in the abs all the time. And that was my You're way tough. of getting sit-ups. <laughs> Maybe that didn't do so good all for right. my pancreas, Anthony. I don't know, but that's really, <laughs> that's good. And for other reasons, because I don't know, it toughened you up, man. It toughened you up. Yeah. You're, a, you're a, yeah, made you a fighter. I'm definitely tough. That's for sure. <laughs> I have learned, but I do believe the body has the ability to heal. And I think that when I read your books, I learn so much and they do give me hope. And I have seen the testimonials in person and firsthand myself that you aren't aware of and you don't need to be aware of because you hear them all over the world. Um, but then also just, you know, online. So these books give me hope. And I know they give so many people hope and you put the power back in our hands because we don't have control over what is going on outside of us, but we can control what we do in our homes and our bodies. And so I'm, I'm going to do the, the smoothie for breakfast. Now I'm going to teach my dad and he's going to be off egg duty for sure. <laughs> I also heard that egg whites have a lot of deuterium as well. And that that's not good for us. Well, I mean, it's not, but the thing is, is like, honestly, you know, when I was told by the voice I hear, put the information that's in these books when I was told to stay away from eggs when I was younger I was heartbroken I loved eggs I have nothing against eggs I tell people to this day if you have no other food and you live somewhere and all you got is like a chicken shed in the back and you got your own eggs and eat them then eat them for sure it's and it's a comfort food for so many people it's it heals their soul seems to heal their soul because they're so because we have family members that make eggs for us when we're growing up we have 
you know, we have moments where eggs are made. It's, it's a really, it's an emotional experience. And so every time I say one bad thing about eggs, I get clobbered, you know, <laughs> I mean, clobbered. I mean, they just like, they, just, they you don't know nothing about science. You're a hack or oh, whatever. The just bots, clobbered, those right? Those are the it's, dairy bots, the dairy yeah, farm bots. Yeah, yeah, it's for true. Sure. It's true. But, but the thing is, is that um, it's something to stay away from if you're struggling. If you really got something going on out there, if you got autoimmune, if you're diagnosed with autoimmune of any kind, then yeah got to stay away from eggs that's one of the things that i would do you know i, I would do um and do autoimmune is not even source? the body attacking itself you know the whole thing that's another thing where you have the autoimmune is your body would never attack itself it would never turn on you that was a theory in the 1950s we got to talk about that someday so what, so it, what is it well first of all science and research medical science never discovered in any test or any study, they never witnessed or discovered the physical body's immune system going after an organ. Like they never found it. It is a theory from the 1950s. So think about it. 1950s, um, you know, when asbestos was still safe, like, okay, and they're they're coming up with a theory. So it, it wasn't proven. So here we are today with a conventional theory that the alternative healing arts is using too. Like alternative medicine uses it. So here it is. It's like you go to an alternative doctor and you're like, okay, yeah, go in the hyperbaric oxygen chamber. Um, make sure you get your B12 shot. Um, make sure you stay away from this food and that food. And by the way, yeah, we subscribe here to your body's destroying itself, which is the autoimmune theory that was made in the 1950s with nothing to prove that it actually was real. It's like alternative medicine subscribed to the conventional theory. It's what went wrong there. Isn't alternative medicine smart enough to know that that was a theory that never was proven and that the body doesn't attack itself? The reason why people have autoimmune, the reason why they're sick with an autoimmune diagnosis is because a pathogen is attacking them. You know, an Epstein-Barr, a shingles, an HHV-6, a cytomegalovirus, virus, a virus is attacking them, not their immune system. So it's not their immune system that's attacking them. It's a pathogen or pathogen combined with toxins like metals and other toxins. It's not their own immune system that's going after them. And that's the difference. So where do you have, in which book do you have what people need to do to get rid of Epstein-Barr? Was that the liver? The, the liver book's a great book, you know, to, to go to. Um, the Medical Medium New Edition, book one. That so has the viral, viral solutions. It has the Epst a lot of Epstein-Barr information. Right. With CFS, you know, chronic fatigue, um, fibromyalgia, multiple sclerosis. It has, it's packed with that whole Epstein bar. Thyroid problems, hypothyroidism, all of it. And it's really jammed packed with that kind of information. But I want people to know, and I, it's awful. It's like I, I was talking to a friend who has a daughter and she got an autoimmune diagnosis. And when she was home, she looked it up. And it said that her body's immune system was destroying her thyroid. There's no coming back from that. So you have this, this situation where my friend's daughter believes every minute of her waking moment that her body's turning against her and destroying itself. It's the yeah. ultimate body shaming that is being completely ignored. First of all, it's not even true because they never saw it. They never found it. They never found it in a study. They never saw it under a microscope. It doesn't exist. And it's, it's a theory from the 1950s. And now this, you know, this young people, when they believe their body's completely turning on them and there's no cure and their body's destroying itself, mm -hmm. where do you go from there? Here you are, you know, 16 years old, 15 years old, 19 years old, and you learn this. What do you do? You know, it's like, and then you just, 
it's it's terrible and that's a huge mistake in other things kind of like blood draw it's another massive mistake in the industry is the autoimmune theory well and then they have you destroy your thyroid right like my mom they had her kill it with the iodine treatment i'm sure that's not good yeah the radioactive iodine treatment yeah yeah there's a lot of people that didn't have to go that route all through these decades um they could have gone a different route if they knew what that route was, but the industry is so far behind. Yeah. Yeah. We have to do an autoimmune episode. We'll do an, listen, we'll do that because it's a whole nother talk and yeah. it's jammed. Like we got things to cover in that will blow people's minds because when you hear it, you'll be like, what? Yeah. What? <laughs> Just, so, so yeah. and then I would love to talk to you about the sun at some point. Yeah. Would love to talk about the sun a little bit too. I think that would, that be, would great. be really cool. Anthony, I love talking to you. This was like so fun. And even though it was like hopeless at first, it was helpful after. <laughs> There's I lots knew. we can do. It's not hopeless. <laughs> it's far from it. It's, it's not. I know, I know. But I'm just I'm just joking because it's it is. It's it's overwhelming. And so many people who are listening are empathic and they feel so much and they get it gets so heavy. So I want to make sure that they they feel heard through that process. But um there are so many solutions and I mean you have about a thousand pages of them in these books. So thank you for for taking the time to share all this with us today. Um, and we might have saved a few people's lives that are going to be very mindful about their blood draws Ugh, while they're really sick. For so sure. If you, if you have people in the audience that are really, they're really, they're on couch island and they're on mattress island a lot and they live there. Cancer. On mattress island. They can't, they can't take a shower easy. They can't go out, run out and buy things easy at the store. They have it really hard. They can't drive. They're, they're crippling anxiety. They're struggling. You know, there's a bunch of those people they're going to be more mindful about their blood work. Maybe they'll learn how to do it and that can save lives. And so every little bit counts. For sure. I love it. Thank you so much. Oh, it's an honor to be here. Thanks for having me. All right, friends, lots to digest here. <laughs> and listen, at the end of the day, baby steps is the most important thing. There is a lot of information here. It can be very overwhelming. Um, I know that I've been cleaning out toxins in my daily life as best I can. I know that it's a lot of work. It's a lot of focus, a lot of energy. So we can only do so much. So don't get overwhelmed. Just do what you can. I'm going to run upstairs right now and check my essential oil and see if it's parfum or if it has any of the bad stuff in it. Make sure that it has no fragrance and no parfum. That's what it was. Um, and I'm definitely going to be demanding less blood be taken from me when I go to the doctors. Can't promise anything on the eggs because my dad does make amazing omelets. Um, but I think I can figure out how to counter the effects of whatever viral thing is going on with these amazing books he has. So listen, you can't play a perfect game. Um, maybe I'll replace some of my breakfast with some other things. But I think I got to get back on the celery juice, actually, now that I think about it. Anyhow, in the meantime, hope this was helpful to you. Don't forget to check out the Medical Medium's books, The Brain Saver and Brain Saver Protocols, Cleanses and Recipes, and so many others. And don't forget your liver is important too. Okay. Especially when you're having lots of cocktails in the, you know, in the week. Anyway, I digress. In the meantime, be nice people, make good choices, and be present. This podcast and all related content published or distributed by or on behalf of Maria Menunos or MariaMenunos.com is for informational purposes only and may include information that is general in nature and that is not specific to you. Any information or opinions expressed or contained herein are not intended to serve as or replace medical advice, nor to diagnose, prescribe, or treat any disease, condition, illness, or injury, and you should consult the healthcare professional of your choice regarding all matters concerning your health, including before beginning any exercise, weight loss, or healthcare program. If you have or suspect you may have a healthcare emergency, please contact a qualified healthcare professional for treatment. Any information or opinions provided by a guest expert or host featured within website or on company's podcast are their own, not those of Maria Menounos or the company. Accordingly, Maria Menounos and the company cannot be responsible for any results or consequences or actions you may take based on information or opinions.